ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. I'm really hot because it's just such a hot day today guys. This is my co-host Teddy. We're chilling here with the test rig because I have a question for you guys here today. So I said on Twitter a while back, do you think, uh, well I'm paraphrasing because I can't even remember exactly what I asked, but pretty much was do you think many uh, reviewers here have sort of lost touch with their average viewer because they themselves run such high-end personal rigs. Take me for example currently running obviously an X399, a 1950X Threadripper and a GTX 1080 Ti. It's a very high-end rig by anybody's means. And so uh, my question was do you think, because I know a lot of other tech reviewers out there also run very high-end rigs and why wouldn't we for the simple fact that most of the time we're getting sent very high-end products from companies and we also, us themselves, want to run really high-end stuff. If you had the chance to, you guys probably would as well. And we do have that chance. So, of course, we do. But that was my question I had for you guys. Because I felt like sometimes when I hear reviewers, other reviewers talk about things, and maybe even I'm guilty of it too, uh, that they sort of forget that the average person isn't going to be spending that much on a graphics card. They might not be able to afford this sort of thing, and we need to keep that in mind a bit more, what the average viewer might actually be able to afford or what they're actually interested in, uh, what appeals to them the most, because it is within their price ranges. So my question here for you guys today is to do with CPU cooling. And I'm also touching on this because this is another area where I think uh, some tech reviewers have gone a little bit over the top. And that is because when they do a CPU test, they will test the CPUs with very, very high-end coolers on them. You know, 240 millimeter liquid coolers, 280 millimeter liquid coolers. Uh, sometimes you might see the odd person running a huge big air cooler on it, one of the big Noctua's or something like that. And that again, to me anyway, seems like uh, quite overkill because maybe the average person out there who's buying that CPU, especially if it's a mainstream one, will not be considering running it with such a high-end cooler. And so if you guys haven't noticed, for the past, I would say, year almost, I would say, I have been running 120 millimeter air coolers for all my mainstream CPU tests and I have still been running a, uh, my H159i for all the high-end enthusiast stuff on X299 and X399. So I wanted to kick it to you guys. Do you think that is something I should continue to do going forward? Is, you know, using say 120 millimeter air coolers for my mainstream testing and a big you know, liquid cooler for my enthusiast high-end testing, or do you think I should, you know, do it a bit differently? Uh, I want to know what you guys think. Well, let me know what you guys are currently running, what CPU cooler you run, and, you know, what CPU, and if you have overclocked it or not, because that's what I really want to know. I want to make videos that, um, you know, and showdowns that give the best and most relevant information to you guys possible. That's the whole reason why I do this channel. And so with running a 120 millimeter air cooler, which to me seemed like a, a nice average of what you guys may be running because uh, these are obviously quite affordable for the most part anyways, and a lot of people see them as sort of good value for money. You get good cooling for the amount you pay in terms of the 120 millimeter air coolers. So let me know in the comment section down below because this, this is something I want to know going forward. Um, obviously, so I can now, before I do any more uh, CPU showdowns, because I'm probably going to be doing a lot this year with all these new CPUs coming out, uh, I can obviously get all those coolers ready and prepared for it, so then um, I can obviously do those showdowns as best as I can. So let me know if you guys, what, what CPU cooler you think, in general, just be generic, doesn't need to be a specific one but sort of what type you think I should be running. And it doesn't need to be one for all. I'm not meaning like a 120 mil millimeter air cooler and I'm supposed to use it for, you know, like Threadripper and, uh, yes, you know, the X299 and all the mainstream stuff. You know, it can be different ones for sort of the different types of buyers. Obviously, the enthusiasts will go for much higher end coolers than maybe the mainstream guys would. 
but that's just why I wanted to make this video because I wanted to kick it to you guys uh, to ask which one you thought was sort of the best middle ground one that I could use going forward. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I see you guys next time.